What's going on, Maskatoon 2 with another video. So today we're going to get on to um, my thoughts on the latest patch of Mortal Kombat 1 and why I think this is the best patch possible as uh, Mortal Kombat 1 is concerned. So previously as I've been playing Mortal Kombat 1 for, been out for almost a year now, I felt like every patch that we've had thus far has basically been nerf, take away this, we don't like this, nerf, take away this, remove this, fix this, crashing fix here, glitch fix here, this has been fixed. Like Mortal Kombat 1 thus far has felt like uh, almost like a beta, which I mean most fighting games in general, they kind of have their changes. Um, I felt like the devs were basically focused on the combat pack and dropping the characters. And then after they dropped the character, whether it be Peacemaker, that was a whole fiasco. So when Omni Man first came out, he had a couple of changes and fixes, but pretty much overall Omni Man stayed mostly the same. Um, Omni Man's whole gimmick when he first came out was basically, oh, you know, uh, you can't move if I basically go build your my stance because I can just teleport to you in half a second. So he makes you play defensive. Cool, cool, cool. Then we had uh, an S character, which was, I believe it was Peacemaker. Um, Peacemaker actually broke the game as a whole. Uh, <laughs> basically, the patch addressed the issues with his tackle, which was a whole fiasco. They had to fix in a couple patches. Um, and to the credit of MK1, the last patch really felt like they actually buffed and enhanced the character. So this is important. No matter what you do to fix the cameos, right? Cameos, I don't feel like were the biggest issue. People were complaining about cameos, and yes, I was there at season one when Cyrax was literally killing the game and choking it with the stronghold of the little spinny tornado blades. I was there for that. Um, but I felt like the worst part of MK1 as a whole was people felt that the characters themselves were very underpowered. Obviously, I play Sub-Zero, and when I'm playing Sub-Zero, it feels like you're almost gambling to get in, if that makes sense. Like, I'm basically having to stagger and hit you and pray that you mash just to open you up in most cases, um, or get a knockdown. If I don't get a knockdown, half meter, or you pre don't press a button, the game becomes very slow. And I mean very slow, because the without the actual cameo, the cameo is like his entire offense, because his base offense is just, it's, let's be honest, it's terrible. Uh, his game plan to get in is absolutely awful. Um, but like I said, I'll give them credit that this last patch actually brought hope into the future of MK1. And I want to say that the, the timing of the patch was important too. So MK1 knew that basically uh, all the other fighting games have been dropping mad characters, mad updates, but also this is the end of the year for Combat Pack 1. And it was smart of them to drop this really good patch near the end of Combat Pack 1 to say, hey guys, look at what we gave you, etc." And they know that based off the momentum of this patch, people will be very incentivized to buy Combat Pack 2, right? Um, so I, like I said, buffing the base character is important because of the simple fact, if you don't buff the base character, right? Most people that play fighting games, they're not used to tag fighters. That's another thing. The reason that people had a whole issue with the cameo system is because you basically turn like Mortal Kombat into a tag based game, um, slash tag assist fighter, which most people don't play tag assist fighters, except for like, let's say Dragon Ball fighters. And getting into Dragon Ball Fighters, right? Uh, Dragon Ball Fighters, when it first came out, had the same balancing issue where you had Goku Black who for seasons was a terrible, terrible design. But what they figured out the successful formula for Dragon Ball Fighters was, okay, we can sit here and keep nerfing Super Brawly and nerfing Brawly and nerfing all the top tiers, or 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 we can literally just sit there and buff the characters that are weaker while simultaneously still increasing and buffing the characters that are doing well. But the buffs for the weaker characters should be more dramatic, which kind of to that point, they buffed the Bejeebies out of Natara. I felt like she was in trouble in some cases, but I feel like they overdid it. But I'm not mad at it so much as I'm excited that they're at least attempting to buff the weaker characters. Uh, Shang Tsung will be getting buffs. I don't think Shang Tsung's that weak, if you ask me, but I don't play Shang Tsung heavily. I played him a little bit. Um, 
I think he has a lot of advantages as far as like actual setup, especially wake up option. But I get his mix is okay. It's kind of weak, so they might increase that to where his drop kick can be comboed into or something crazy like that. But uh, I really just feel like this last patch they found their groove, and I feel like if they continue moving at this pace with increasing the strength of each and every character, especially the low tier Sub Zero, Gears, uh, Havoc is actually kind of cracking out, but Havoc as well. And not just, just saying, okay, we're making the character better and increasing like, you know, the speed of this or speed of that. Obviously that makes the game more fun and people have to lab and adjust. But I know it's a, I know this is also a, a kind of a little controversial as far as talking to the devs because it's expensive to do this, but giving the characters new moves, month to month we get a new season pack or a new season with the new skins and that's like the old hurrah, I'm gonna get back on the game, I'm gonna play invasions and I'm gonna grind out some skins slash combat league, right? Um, on top of, I'll give Mortal Kombat some credit, each season has basically been with a list of changes. However, if we got, let's say, the next 12 months, a new move or a, or just like every couple of months, a new move or so for like, not even each character, but every other character, right? That would increase like the game as a whole as far as like exciting things to look up for like mix-up moves, which, like I said, to their credit, Fair is the best cameo they've dropped as of yet, um, just for playstyle-wise. Not meta-wise, but playstyle-wise. The 50-50s, that go into combos, the command grab, that's that's all well and done. Um, but I think, personally, what they're going to have to do to hold and maintain players, obviously, the Combat Pack 2 is going to keep players uh, incentivized to play it, at least for the Sector 1 side race. I'm going to be all over that day one like especially new side bot exciting stuff there but i feel like as a whole to keep players excited you need to basically give us a new mode um more more likely with like the tag fighting mode that would be very exciting if they actually managed to implement that even if it's cracked we expect it to be broken truth be told don't focus on the characters being broken as long as you don't have infinites and you have like a damage cap in place focus on okay we're gonna make the game as exciting as possible as fun as possible right where everybody has a gimmick and everybody has something crazy they can do and then tone the game down does that make sense so like crazy new stuff first and then okay y'all don't like this y'all don't like that tone down and adjust um because when this game first launched the, my actual initial issue with the game was it just felt like I was playing like a, a really a really good looking demo like it was a lot of characters that were just insane because of their base kit with a cameo and that's part of the thing I like about this patch was when you boost the base character strength of the character the game is overall more fun because let's be honest people don't like the cameos cameos are just like a icing on the cake type of deal but if you don't have no cake, you just got all like icing. You know what I'm saying? It's not a good balance. And to my point is why we should buff the weaker characters and really focus on giving the top tiers a little bit of juice just so again, because everybody wants to enjoy and have fun with the game. If a character is better, for example, let's say I'm fighting uh, Johnny Cage, right? Because everybody obviously knows who Johnny Cage is. And I'm playing Sub-Zero, right? If we use the same cameo, Johnny Cage can basically beat down and use whoever he wants to. So Johnny Cage players, I see why they play Johnny Cage. It's not that obviously he just gets an easy win. I can use Johnny Cage with any cameo and be good. Uh, I can't say the same thing with Sub-Zero because Sub-Zero has a list of rules, whether it be meter, staggering, uh, situationally mixing them up, hard knock. Now there's a lot of more factors I have to include with Sub-Zero. Like when I'm playing Sub-Zero, it's like, do I have a cameo? Do I have meter? There's so many more factors I have to worry about where Johnny Cage is literally just punch, 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 kick, punch, 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 stop, safe, grab. He's literally just kind of like disco, disco revolution having fun with you, right? And with Sub-Zero, it's like you have to, you're sweating internally playing him uh, because I, I still can't explain to you all what Sub-Zero's really advantage is. I've tried to laugh him and be like, well, Sub-Zero's a zoner. 
But the problem is, maybe they just intended for him to be the worst zoner in the game because people say that Shang Tsung's weak, but he can easily outzone me. Um, I can't think of one character that I that can't outzone me. Havoc can outzone me. Uh, Sindel obviously can outzone me. So it begs the question: Are they going to improve slash change Sub Zero into a zoner? Are we going to commit to that? Or is he a trap character? Because if he's a trap character, they should not be just metering, sliding through the clone, and basically bogarting through like the clone. Like the clone stops people for half a second, and that was something else I wanted to touch up on. They should just probably give us a longer clone, or just reduce the cooldown to back to what it was. Uh, because the clone, as of right now, is just—it's honestly a, a joke, for real, for real. <laughs> and the slide he has is that's not uh, it either needs to be faster or actually have more juggle potential because as it is base form where i have to use meter just to juggle use it's insane it's, it's actually insane but like i said i'm not gonna rant too long this has been masketeers and my thoughts on the new patch as a whole till next time peace